What's up, Volcanoes, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about the muzzle category, because in this game, we have quite a bit of options to choose from when it comes to shotguns and what you can put on the end of that barrel. So we're going to go through from the worst to the best, basically. We're going to go through which ones are useless and then which ones you should be looking out for, and I'll give my personal opinion on which one I think is best. So let's just get into it. The first ones we'll look at are the compensators, and these are things like the Lockwood Smoothfire 12 and the RMG E7. These basically help typically with vertical and horizontal recoil control, and honestly, this is a shotgun typically that isn't something you need to worry about. I will argue though, in some cases, if you're using slugs and you need to aim down sights, the recoil can be a bit of an issue, and the 725 as well, or the Lockwood 300, since you have two quick shots, the follow-up tends to be a little bit higher, so this can help with that and make it more consistent, but honestly, Honestly, there's better ways to go about kitting your gun, and I honestly don't recommend these at all in most cases. Up next are the flash hiders, and these typically help with muzzle flash concealment and recoil stabilization. Right off the bat, we can kind of write off recoil stabilization. We don't really care about that on a shotgun. And then we have muzzle flash concealment. This can kind of help if you're trying to be more stealthy, but honestly, if you're going for stealth, use a suppressor because it's much harder to pinpoint where someone is because you're still gonna be loud as hell if you have a flash hider. All it does is kind of subdue the flash coming from the muzzle of the gun so i mean it's not really worth it at all in this case at all these two attachments by the way the compensators and the flash hiders you can tune them but they're really not worth tuning because there's nothing that's super important other than gun kick control you can make that better but the rest it's just not worth it so i wouldn't recommend running these types of attachments on any of your shotguns since there's better ways to go about it next up we have breachers and these are basically just going to help with melee damage and that's pretty much all they do that's all they're good for so you'll notice if you don't have one of these on and you try to hit someone with the butt end of your gun it's going to take two hits with one of these equipped it will take just one hit it doesn't matter which one you use it doesn't matter which breacher you use you will get a one hit melee kill if you hit them with the butt end of your gun and this equipped so i mean that's kind of nice this is a little bit more practical than the other two but again there's better ways to kit the gun but it can be fun it does have some meme potential where you can just run around and smack people with a shotgun rather than shoot them it's kind of funny kind of do it for the lulls but in all honesty yeah you're better off with something else like as we'll get into a suppressor or a choke now into the big juicy part of the video and that is really comparing the last two types of attachments we have which are the suppressors and the chokes First of all, the suppressors. The big thing about these is that they tend to give you the most range possible for your shotguns. Now, there's a couple different options, and for guns like the Bryson and the Expedite, we have things like the SA Schwein DX and the SA MX50. These are both the ones you want to use if you want the most range from your gun. But I will point out that the SA MX50 tends to have a little bit more range than the SA Schwein DX, so just keep that in mind. Also, the Lockwood 300 has different types of muzzle attachments because it's a double barrel you're looking at the Saken db 107 and the gw max 99 those are your two max damage range attachments and again the second one the gw max 99 was the one that i got the most range with when i was testing out the one shot kill ranges and such like that so if we take a look at the suppressors you'll see there's a lot of pros to using them sound suppression velocity damage range recoil smoothness but really the most important thing here is i think the damage range because these suppressors tend to help your range by about two meters across the board generally but for example, the Bryson 800, its base one-shot kill range is around that 13 meter mark. With one of these suppressors, either the DX or the MX50, you'll have about a 15 meter one-shot kill, if you're aiming down sights, that is. So as you can see, these are definitely the ones to go for if you want that sort of max range, max one-shot kill potential. Now that sounds fun and dandy, but I want to get into the negatives, because for me in this particular game, I find suppressors to be a little lackluster for a few reasons. One, they really hurt your aim down sight speed and it is really noticeable. For something like the SA Schwein DX, it hurts it by about 40%. With the MX-50, it was only about 20%, which I find a little weird. So basically, on average for these suppressors, you're looking at a penalty of about 20 to 40% to your aim down sight speed, which is incredibly noticeable. And there is some attachments to help alleviate that, like the no stock mod and things like that. But you can tell when you have a suppressor on. It just feels so beefy and slow. And honestly, I'm going to have to say that this is one of the reasons why a lot of people probably have so much inconsistencies with the shotguns. Why? Because, well, it doesn't do anything for your pellet spread, and it makes it slow to aim down sights. And one of the most important things to do with a shotgun in this particular game is to aim down sights. 
because what ends up happening is you'll run into someone with your pants down, you try to get your one shot, you might jump or something, you try to aim down sights, it's just so slow, you can't get a tight enough pellet spread fast enough to get that one shot kill, and you end up getting a hit marker, and then you try to hit fire thinking, okay, maybe I can just hit fire and kill him, and nope, you get another hit marker. So yeah, you want to aim down sights, but these suppressors, they make you so slow when it comes to aiming, I just don't recommend them most of the time. I think for a lot of hit fire builds, or if you play a little bit more slow and you're kind of pre-aiming and stuff like that, I think a suppressor's totally fine, but me, I play aggressive. I like to get in people's faces, aim down sights and get that one shot kill, and these are not conducive to that playstyle in my opinion. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you don't use them because obviously they have some niche and they actually work practically because they do give you a good bit of range and you can equip it with some big barrels and get a really hefty one shot kill. But again, me, I like to sacrifice that one shot kill range, be a little bit more aggressive and aim down sights to get a more consistent one shot kill range. And that's what I don't like about these things is they don't really have good consistency. Plus one other downside is you can't really tune anything nice about it. You can't help with bullet velocity, that will help with slugs maybe. And you can also tune aim down sight speed but there's no extra benefit to range or anything like that. So if you were hoping to maximize tuning with this, you're basically looking at better aim down sight speed or better bullet velocity, things like that. So nothing crazy there. Next, I want to talk about my favorite muzzle attachments, and that is the chokes. And there's about four for each type of gun. The Lockwood 300 has its own four, and then the Expedite and Bryson variants have their own four as well. So the chokes in this game have varying degrees of what they do. First of all, you have some that just help with range, some that help with tighter pellet spread and damage range, and then one that just helps with a tighter pellet spread. First of all, if you're looking for the most tight spread you can possibly get, the ones you want to use are the Bryson Choke on the Expedite and the Bryson 800 and the 890. And then for the Lockwood 300, you want to use the Bryson Series 12 Choke. These are going to give you the tightest pellet spread, and they don't really give you any range, but one of the secrets here is you can actually tune the attachment and make it to where it does, in fact, give you more damage range. And when you tune these chokes, you're looking at getting maybe a benefit of around three to six tenths of a meter more on your gun. So it's not as much as a suppressor, but you'll see that it's pretty nice for other reasons. If you're looking on the Expedite or the Bryson to get a little bit of a better spread, but also a lot more range, you can use something like the Bryson Improved Choke since that gives you the next best type pellet spread, and then just tune that for damage range and type pellet spread. That's going to give you close to half a meter more of range. Again, they're not as much as suppressors, but one of the big things about these that I really like is that they don't weigh your aim down sight speed nearly as much. At 60 frames per second, all these chokes were basically hurting my aim down sight speed by about one frame, so we're talking like 16 million milliseconds as opposed to like 100 to 200 type of thing it really doesn't make a big impact and you can feel how much snappier it is when you have a choke on and because of the tight pellet spread what ends up happening is if you're aiming down sights and you're consistent with your shots you get more consistent one shot kills because the pellets are so tight and if you're caught running you have a better chance of getting your gun up much faster than if you have a big barrel with a giant suppressor on the end of your gun and to me that's one of the main reasons to use a choke over a suppressor is because consistent consistency. A lot of people complain about inconsistent shotguns. Use a choke and aim down sights and make sure to aim down sights with most of your engagements and you'll notice your kills are a lot more consistent. I promise you that is really the secret here. You can use a suppressor like I said but to me I like being snappy getting my aim quick so that is going to be with a choke and getting a nice tight pellet spread. So to sum it up for you guys if you want the most range on your Bryson or Expedite use the SAMX50 suppressor. If you want the most range on your 725 or other your Lockwood 300 then use the GW Max 99 suppressor. If you want a good balance of range and a tight pellet spread, use the Improved Choke on the Bryson and the Expedite, and then use the Series 9 Choke on the 725. And then if you want a little bit of range with mostly a tight pellet spread that's really consistent, use the Bryson Choke or the Bryson Series 12 Choke on the 725. And make sure to kit these things out for a tighter spread and also more damage range. And guys, that is just about going to do it for this video. A little bit longer than I thought it would be, but I wanted to go over things more in depth and basically just share my thoughts on the muzzle attachments as a whole. So let me know what you guys think about the video. Let me know what you guys think about these attachments and which one is your favorite. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next video. Send it, sir.